Welcome back. In the last few videos, what we've done is we've we've basically used um, integrals to calculate the electric field at certain points. Um, we've looked at the electric field due to a charged rod, a charged semicircular rod, um, a charged line of charge. Um, so we've looked at a bunch of things like that, and we've used integrals to calculate electric field. But there's actually another way you can calculate electric field, and it's if you know a function for voltage. Okay. Now, voltage doesn't necessarily have to mean one dimension. It can be in one dimension, two dimensions, or three dimensions. And in this problem, we're going to look at how to calculate the electric field at a certain point um, given a voltage that's in three dimensions okay now before we really get into the meat of this problem I want to give you sort of an sort of an intuition as to what voltage is and for that I'm going to come over here okay voltage is the work done per unit charge if you want to move a charge from one point to another in an electric field okay so let's say I have let's say I have this point right here this point right there and I'm gonna put a charge in blue right here okay now one thing we do know is that we know that work is equal to force times distance okay I'll, I'll say D um, technically we know that work is the integral of force DX but we'll just put it like this and voltage is force times distance divided by the charge and so if I wanted to move and let's say that this distance right here this distance is D then I'm going to have to apply some force to this charge to move it to this point right here. So what I'm ultimately going to do is I'm going to move this charge over to this other point right here. Okay, I'm going to have to apply some force to move it that distance. And the voltage essentially is the work done per unit charge. Okay, so for example, for example, let's say that I had to apply a force of say 10 newtons. Okay, and let's say I ha and let's say that um, let's say that the distance was 10 meters. Okay, the distance is 10 meters. Now note that newton meters that's units of joules. Okay, and that's what we expect because we have basically the work. Okay, and just to make the math easy, let's say that the the charge is 10 coulombs. Okay, so when you're dealing with voltage, you have to be in newtons, meters, coulombs, joules, whatever. Okay, so you can clearly see here that the voltage here between this point right here and this point right here, the voltage difference is going to be 10 volts. So the voltage is measured in volts. Okay, and just to just to clarify, the voltage is the work done to move a charge from one point to another in an electric field okay so we're going to have some electric field here now it also turns out that if you have a voltage okay if you were to take the let's say we're in one dimension okay if you were to take the derivative of voltage with respect to some position let's just say x so we're in we have a voltage in one dimension okay if you were to take the derivative of voltage with respect to the position you would actually get the negative of the electric field and just keep in mind that this is a vector okay so if you take the derivative of voltage with respect to the position you actually get the negative of the electric field likewise another way of writing this is the negative derivative of voltage with respect to the position is excuse me, equals is the electric field Okay, so those are two equivalent ways to write this. But here's the problem when you're in three dimensions. Um, normal derivatives, which are um, with respect to one variable, are not defined anymore. So you have what we call partial derivatives. And you may want to go uh, watch some videos on partial derivatives or learn about partial derivatives. But essentially what's going to happen is, let me come back over to the left side, okay? When you take a partial derivative, what you're essentially going to do is you're going to take it with respect to one of the variables okay so for example let's let's start with taking it with respect to x okay and the way you denote a partial derivative is you have this symbol that looks like this it's sort of like a d but it's sort of twisted and you'll take the partial derivative of voltage with respect 
to x. So let's take the partial derivative of voltage with respect to x first. Okay, so what you're essentially going to do is you're going to, at least from the context of this problem, notice that the only part of this function for voltage that depends on x is the exponential function. Okay, so the tangent function, the y function, or the y squared, we would say, um, those don't depend on x. So all of those functions you're actually going to hold constant. Okay, so you can treat them basically as a constant coefficient that comes along for the ride. And the only thing that you're taking the derivative with respect to is e to the negative 5x. So let's actually do that. So what I'm going to do in these problems is I'm going to I'm going to write the constants in red, okay, for each derivative. Okay, so the partial of voltage with respect to x, let's write the the constants first. So we're going to have tangent tangent of z divided by 4y squared. So all of those things in the partial of v with respect to x, those are all constants, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of e to the negative 5x. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll take the derivative. So what's the derivative of e to the negative 5x? We'll you'll have negative 5e to the negative 5x, okay? And there's your partial derivative. Okay, there's your partial derivative. Then what we'll do is we'll actually evaluate it at these points. So at this point, we'll start plugging in numbers, okay? So uh, let's say tangent of zero. So this will be tangent of zero because we're evaluating this at z equal to zero meters. So tangent of zero divided by four times y. Well, what's y? y is two, so this will be four times 2 squared, and then we'll multiply that times negative 5 and times e to the negative 5. What's, what is x? x is 1 fifth, okay, so that's 5 times 1 fifth. Um, if we were to simplify this, we would get tangent of 0 divided by 4 times 4, which is 16, times negative 5, times e to the negative 1, but you should recognize, you should recognize that tangent of 0 is just 0. Okay, so that works out really nicely because if you're multiplying anything by zero, assuming there's no zeros in the denominator, then the whole thing is zero. So the partial of the voltage with respect to x is going to be zero. So what we would say is that for this, the electric field is the negative of that because recall over here what we said was that the partial of voltage, or we should say in general the derivative of voltage with respect to x is the electric field um, of that component but the negative of it. Okay, so we could say of negative zero but it's just zero. So what we would say is E in the x direction is just zero. Okay, so the electric field in the x direction is going to be zero. Okay, and we're going to do that for the rest of these. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rewrite this because sometimes when you have a, a polynomial in the denominator, it can be a little bit tricky to figure out what it is. I'm going to rewrite this function as one fourth e to the negative five x times tangent of z. That doesn't look like a tangent, but I think you get the point. Tangent of z times y to the negative second. Okay, and I think that really clears up a little bit um, the functions because now you have the polynomial with a um, with a negative sign in in the numerator, and it's a little bit easier to take the derivative of that using power rule. Okay, so we're going to have the partial of voltage with respect to y. Okay, well what I'm going to do now is I'm going to now um, write down all the things I'm going to hold as constant. Okay. So this derivative is with respect to y only. So that means anything that's a function of x and z just comes along for the ride. Okay, so this is going to be 1 fourth times e to the negative 5x times tangent of z. And then I'm going to take the derivative of, of the y function. Well, if I take that derivative, it's going to be negative 2, negative 2, times y to the negative 3, because you drop the power by 1, which I can essentially rewrite as 1 over y cubed. 
But once again, we still have a tangent of z when we evaluate this, right? We still have a tangent of z, and so z is evaluated at zero. So what is the electric? What is the? What is this equal to? Well, it's equal to zero, and we could say that e the electric field in the y direction is equal to negative zero, but we can just say that the electric field in the y direction is equal to zero. So that is our answer for that part. Okay. Now, what you're going to see in this part is that the next part is going to get a little bit interesting because now we're going to be taking the derivative with respect to with respect to z. Okay. And actually, what I'm going to do is because I'm going to have to scroll down. I'm going to copy this, control C, and I'm going to scroll down, control V. Okay, so here's our function. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative, the partial derivative of voltage with respect to Z. Okay, so what I'm going to have is the partial of voltage with respect to Z. Okay, and that means that a lot of this stuff is just going to come along for the ride okay as constant coefficients so I'm gonna have basically one-fourth times e to the negative 5x okay and that's gonna be multiplied by 1 over y squared because I'm essentially treating the x and y functions as constants and then we have to take the derivative of tangent of z well, what's the derivative of tangent of z well that's just secant squared of z so secant squared of z. And now I have to evaluate this at the given points. Okay, But here's the, here's the thing that's interesting. Here, we're not going to get something that's equal to 0. Okay, We're actually going to have to do a little bit of work here. Okay, So here's the thing. Um, let's rewrite this in a way that's a little bit more understandable. Um, so what we're essentially going to have is, let me switch colors. I'm going to do this in, in, let's do purple. So I'm basically going to have I'm going to have e to the negative 5x, and that's going to be over 4y squared. Let me rewrite secant squared z as something a little bit different. Let's do secant of z times secant of z. Okay. Well, what what is secant of z in general? Well, it's it's one over cosine of z, right? Just like you have, you know, if you had 1 over, excuse me, if you have cosecant, that's 1 over sine. But secant is, is 1 over cosine. So let me rewrite this. We have e to the negative 5x over 4y squared. And that's going to be multiplied by, well, secant's 1 over cosine of z. So 1 over cosine of z times 1 over cosine of z. And usually what people do is they don't, really memorize secant of z and they don't really memorize you know um, cosecant of z you know what they memorize are sine and cosine and that's really what you should do for the most part um, because you can easily take secant squared z and convert it into 1 over cosine squared z okay so now what we're ready to do is we're ready to evaluate this okay so let me I'll go to the left this time so what is x in this case? x is one-fifth. So when we evaluate this, let me do this in yellow, a bold color. We'll get e to the negative fifth times one-fifth. Okay. And then that's going to be divided by 4y squared. Well, what's y? y was, it, we're evaluating this at 2 meters. So this will be divided by 4 divided by 2 squared. Okay, so that's the first term right there. And then we're going to be multiplying this times 1 over cosine squared z, or we could say that's 1 over cosine of z times 1 over cosine of z. What's z? z is 0 meters. Okay, well, what is cosine of 0? Well, if you're looking at a unit circle like this, okay, you know, 0 is at this point. This is 0 and 2 pi. And you could sort of think of cosine as the horizontal component of the unit circle and sine as the vertical component. So actually what cosine of zero is, is one. Okay, so we're basically multiplying this. I'll do this in purple. We did this. It's basically one over cosine of z is one because z is zero. 
times times 1 over cosine of 0, which is 1. Okay, so now it really boils down to simplifying this. Okay, so what's e to the negative 5 times 1 fifth? Well, that's just e to the negative first. And then what is 4 times 2 squared? Well, that's 4 times 4, which is 16. And then you're just multiplying this times basically 1. Well, we can simplify this a little bit. We can basically rewrite this as 1 over 16e. Okay? And then that basically is, that is, remember, that is the partial derivative of voltage with respect to z. So this is the partial derivative of voltage with respect to z. But if we want to find the electric field, we have to take the negative of this. So the electric field in the z direction, that's equal to, to negative 1 over 16e. And I've been circle, I've been boxing it in blue, so let's do that. So the electric field in the z direction is equal to negative 1 over 16e. Okay? So now what I'll do is I'm going to do something. I'm going to write the electric field, the total electric field. I'm going to write it in unit vector notation. Okay? So if, if you're looking at something that's in the x direction, usually denote that with a unit vector in the x direction, which is usually i hat. In the y direction, that would be j hat, and in the z direction, that's that's z. Uh, or the, excuse me, the the um, z direction, it's k hat. Okay. So if I want to find the total electric field E, then that's going to be the magnitude of the electric field in the x direction times i hat. But in the x direction and y direction, they're just zero. So this is going to be zero times i hat. You don't even have to include that if you don't want to, but I'm going to do it just to show you, okay? And then you're going to have plus, and then you're going to have zero times j hat, okay? So that is basically the electric field multiplied by its unit vector in the, in the y direction, and then you're going to have plus a negative 1 over 16e, and then you're going to multiply that times a unit vector in um, this direction, which is k hat. Okay, and that that's basically how you would express the electric field in unit vector notation. But let's do something a little bit different. Let's use the distance formula. Let's use the distance formula to figure out exactly what the magnitude of the electric field is, because what we've done is um, we've essentially figured it out. Um, using unit vector notation. It, it, doing this is a little bit trivial, but let's actually figure out what the magnitude is. So what you would do to figure out the magnitude is you'd say that you'd say that e total e total is equal to the square root. Okay, you take the x component squared plus you take the y component squared. And then you take the z component squared, which is negative 1 over 16e, and square that, okay? If you simplify this a little bit, what you're going to get is just it's going to be the square root of negative 1 over 16e squared. And so what we'll say is the magnitude of the electric field total is going to be equal to 1 over 16e. So if you if you want to find the total magnitude of the electric field, you have to use the distance formula. Okay? Here it was a little bit trivial, but if you have if you actually have x and y components that are not zero, you're going to get a number that's different than the electric field um, that you calculated for the z direction. Okay, so I hope this video gave you a little bit of intuition on how to convert between voltage and electric field. See you in the next video.